Hey guys, Forgiving Age here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys another video. And today we're going to be talking about an affordable PC build that I'm actually using myself. I'm going to be giving you guys some benchmarks of the old CPU that I have and the new CPU I have combined with the graphics card. So you guys can either go with the worst CPU or the better CPU. Both get about 60 FPS most games. Depends what settings you're playing. But today I'm going to be talking about those settings and all the individual parts gone into this build. So yeah, let's just get started. <laughs> So we're going to first start off with all of the parts gone into this build. If you guys want to check it out on screen right now, there's going to be just a list scrolling through the parts or you guys can go check out the link on PCPartBigger.com, the link will be in the description if you guys want to go check out this build, maybe modify it for yourself. For our newest CPU, we have the AMD FX8320, clocked at 3.5 GHz, but we have it overclocked at 3.66. We have the MSI 970 Gaming ATX. AM3 motherboard. It works very well. It has a nice plate cover for the back, very foam, and it just has an overall great feel to it. Easy to put in and easy to install. For the memory, 12 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM. You guys can really just put any amount of RAM if you're going to be building this exact same build, but I recommend, you know, 8 to 12 gigabytes. 4 gigabytes with this is going to kind of strain some of your performance but it's not going to matter too much if you're not doing that high of process tasks like rendering, editing videos, streaming, stuff like that. You won't need that much RAM. Now these next two things I only have one of. I do not use an SSD. I use three hard drives. One, one terabyte. Two, one fifty gigabytes. One for games, one for recordings, and one for my operating system. A one fifty gigabyte is for my operating system. A 150 gigabyte is also for games, and then that terabyte is for recordings and other massive gigabyte games like GTA and Far Cry. For our GPU, we have the NVIDIA GTX 770 2 gigabyte. Uh, the reason I chose a 770 is because I really didn't need anything extremely high performance. It's not like I'm going to be playing on everything high settings. I want to be able to make videos at a comfortable frame rate where I do not have to complain about that frame rate while creating a video or while editing that video and seeing how choppy that frame rate is. So that's why I chose the 770. You guys can also upgrade that to like a 770 or a 750 Ti, 960, 980 Ti, really anything, everything is going to work. My choice of case was the Thermaltake Overseer RX1 uh, mid tower case. This is a full tower case here, but I actually have the mid tower white edition. And for our power supply, we have a EVGA 500 watt. In my computer, I do not have a 500 watt. I actually have a 400 watt and it works perfectly fine. I'm still under the watt limit. So I don't need to upgrade that until, you know, if I get anything more like I want to do SLI to graphics cards, anything like that. For our fans, we have our blue LED Cooler Master R4 fans, and they are actually pretty nice. I have one of them in my case now in another CPU fan actually ghettily taped on the top because I did not actually buy two more fans, but I'm but there is two spots in the top, two in the back, one in the bottom, and then one in the front for all fans. And just remember that you guys can buy more than three fans. You definitely are going to need at least two with this uh, because it does pull a lot of heat, especially with this case. And I added a little something here at the bottom. If you guys are going for the whole, I want to color my case, you know, have some nice LEDs in there. I'm going with a blue design with a white. We got the cases white. Everything else is lit up with LED blue, my keyboard, my fan, and even these dual code cath light kit. I don't actually know if this is what I bought originally because I did buy this quite a while ago, but I did find it again, and these are really nice. So you take each end of them, tape it on the door of your computer, and plug it into a fan slot or an empty power slot to power it up. There's a switch on the back to turn these lights on and off. They look extremely cool whenever it's really dark, kind of comes out of your case when it's got a window or any of the fan slots. Looks extremely nice and just adds a nice touch to your PC. Now we're going to get into things I actually know stuff about. Not saying I don't know anything about actual computer parts, but at the same time saying I do not know everything. So 
we are going to run through the benchmark test that I did about a month ago first on the old CPU, which was the AMD A10, which was a decent CPU, but it did not have the processing power to stream nor render that quickly. So I decided to upgrade to the 8320, although the A10 is very well packed and it's just an overall great CPU, but that's only if you're going to be going for the low tier FPS in sort of high range games. So yeah, let's get on to that. So first we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive. On the last CPU, we get an average of 205 FPS with a min of 154 and max of 243. These tests were run on high settings every single one of these games and here are the results. With a recording average it was kind of hard to get for each game because the fraps lock did not want to work with me at that time so the max I got was 60. Obviously that's extremely good because you know you're, I'm not getting anything below 60 but it's not going higher than 60. But we got Rocket League next I'm going to kind of exclude this one, but I'm still going to talk about it. Rocket League, I got an average FPS of 61 or 62, a min FPS of 59, a max FPS of 63, and a recording average of 40. Now at the time, the reason I'm excluding this is because I did not realize that I have an FPS cap on in Rocket League. During this test, I could have gone high enough to go to 250 FPS, but I do not have that test running anymore, nor do I have it able to run to get the test again. After not being able to test Rocket League at its max status, we're going to totally blow out that game. You can think about it as we get a solid 60 FPS for every game that you play in Rocket League. But also, think about turning up the FPS max that is capped at 250, which we do run into some problems with on our next test. H1Z1, King of the Kill is average at 59 or 60 FPS every time you play. The minimal FPS that I've gotten while playing H1Z1 is 35 FPS and the max I've gotten is 106 in some areas. While recording I get about 38 FPS which isn't bad but is definitely not good while playing H1Z1. While doing the Resident Evil benchmark test it is a benchmark test testing every little thing about your graphics card physics test, how well it can handle more entities at once. We got our average FPS at about 91 and our minimal FPS at 14. Our max FPS came to whenever there was no entities but just plain ground, which we got 409 FPS. Recording average is unknown since this is a benchmark test and it would be silly just to start recording a benchmark. Grand Theft Auto 5, remember this is on the last CPU, got an average FPS of 43 a min FPS of 34 and a max FPS of 54. Recording average was about 42 after recording multiple videos on GTA 5 on that same CPU. Worked out extremely well when you're not playing online. So now we're going to be moving on to the new CPU, the FX8320. With this installed, Counter-Strike got an average of 270 FPS max settings on Aztec. Counter-Strike got a min FPS of about 219. Now who can't deal with 219 FPS on CSGO at any given time? We got our max FPS where it was not raining on Aztec, therefore under the bridge where all the water is and you're just sitting still. We got 343 FPS and with fraps locks we still got it caught at 60. We still ran into problems with Rocket League on this new test. After turning up the FPS cap we realized that the cap was 250. The max FPS exceeded the cap, therefore we could not find out its maximum average. H1Z1, King of the Kill, got an average of 79.59 FPS. The .59 does not matter no matter what, but we got an average of 80 FPS, a min average of about 51, and a max FPS of 129. While recording, we get about 56 FPS while going through high dense areas and town. Resident Evil, the Resident Evil 6 benchmark test, we got about a 90 average, staying around the exact same average of 91 with the last CPU. The min going up to about 16 FPS and the max lowering to 317. Now this may just have been circumstances, but we did lower about 100 FPS during those times. 
This could be fluctuated if the benchmarks would start in the menus, therefore getting a higher FPS on each test. Grand Theft Auto 5 for the average FPS of the new CPU, we get 51 for an average, 34 for the lowest, and 70 for the max. While recording, we get about 57 FPS. Do remember that each game is tested on high settings for two minutes each, so they have about the same time to change the results as any of these tests. Rust on beautiful settings sets out 52 FPS at an average, a 12 at a minimum when a lag spikes hit, and 92 while looking up at the sky. We get about a 50 FPS lock on fraps while recording Rust. We do not know why this is happening, it did not fluctuate at all, but it could have been the circumstances while recording. On your screen now you can see a graph of the min, max, and average FPS, so you can see just about how much FPS each of these games got and what their averages were. Blue stands for average FPS, red stands for min FPS, and the orange stands for max FPS. As I mentioned before, some of these numbers may be fluctuated due to poor benchmark tests. Therefore, benchmarking in the menu or any other places where graphic tests aren't even needed. Without even showing you guys these tests, I bet I could tell you once that this graphics card and this build is amazing and some of you guys would actually consider building something like this. But just showing you these tests to prove that anything that you build needs to be built with consideration. Before entering off this video, if you guys do live in the United States, anywhere around these locations, you guys can go to Micro Center and bundle the AMD FX 8320 with a 970 gaming motherboard for $179 while it lasts. These do change about once a month and there are new deals always rising. You can get the 8350 for about $229 with the exact same motherboard. Any of them will help you out significantly, save you about $40. To end off this video, I want to leave you guys with a link to a giveaway that I'm doing a minimal wear M4A1S Nitro that I got a few days ago and I'm doing a giveaway of this for CSGO if you guys didn't realize what I was talking about. But yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and if you did, leave a like or down below where you feel the video deserves and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.